Today, I'll be showing you how to make this dress inspired by the Barbie movie coming out this summer. This dress ended up being really simple and really fun, so it'd be a great starter project or for anyone who's excited for the movie. As always, I start out with a sketch of what I want my finished product to look like. The only fabric I had at the beginning of this project was this sheer glittery sequin pink. I went to Goodwill in search of house linens that were pink and I found one sheet that was hot pink that I thought to use as an underlay for the glittery sheer sequiny overlay. And then I found one sheet set of the pink with white polka dots. My first idea was to use the pink with white polka dots just as the bodice and then use the hot pink with the sheer overlay as a skirt, basically having two different polka dot moments on the same dress. So here I'm cutting out the panels to begin that dress and see where it takes me. As you saw from the first few videos, um, the sketch does not match what I ended up doing. For the foundation of this dress, I ended up using my favorite go-to pattern, Butterix B4571. The pattern is for a Renaissance dress, but I love the neckline so much, I knew I wanted to use that and modify the rest. I also knew that I wanted a fuller skirt, self-tie straps, and about a T-length skirt. I started out by making the bodice and the bodice lining exactly the way that the pattern tells me to. Then once I had that all sewn together, I went back in and I cut off the straps from the original pattern pieces so that I knew where the strapless part of the dress would hit and I knew it would cover everything that needed to be covered. Here I am pressing out my seams in preparation for sewing the lining into the bodice and here sewing the lining and the bodice together. With a strapless dress, I went straight down the top and flipped it on the inside out or the right side in. Here you can see that seam for sewing the two together which is a lot easier when you don't have any sleeves to go around. Time to flip that bodice. Just taking it and pulling the corners out and look how good it looks. I love it when things just come together and it, it looks a lot better than I imagined it was going to. Once I had it flipped to the correct side, I went ahead and held it up to myself, just making sure everything was going to cover exactly where I wanted it to and imagining where I would have the straps put in place. Once I had the bodice made, I took time to cut out the skirt panels. Like I said, my original pattern was to make this hot pink skirt under a sheer overlay of gathered tulle. So I used my Butterick pattern to shape my panels but cut them shorter so that it would be more of a T-length gown. I sewed those panels together just like the pattern told me to um, until I had a skirt. Then I went ahead and did gathering seams across the top um, so that it would be the same width as the bodice. Here's what it looked like once I had gathered both of those seams and then I had to figure out how to make this tool work. I bought this tool at a thrift type store, so I had no idea how much I had. So I decided just to go for it and gather as much as possible, thinking that I would want a super flowy, um, princessy, poofy kind of skirt. Now you may be thinking or wondering why I decided to show all this part of the process when this didn't even end up on the final product. But I feel like sewing is such a journey, especially the failure parts or the parts that you didn't really think um, were going to go to plan. So I thought for transparency's sake, showing the entire journey of this dress really would just make it all make a lot more sense. Here I am adjusting the gathers of the tool, trying to get it so that it would match the waist of the rest of the skirt thinking that if I just gathered as much as possible, it would be so floofy. Um, well, we're about to see how that turned out. Pinning that and the hot pink skirt together. I also didn't love 
how little pink red. This was me trying it on, just kind of holding it up to myself for the first time. And to me, it didn't look floofy or princessy. It just looked drab. And then holding it up with the pink bodice for the first time, I didn't think the two pinks went together at all. I thought the two polka dots looked like a hot mess. So I took the tool off, tried the hot pink on just by itself with the bodice and still didn't like it. The good news was that the sheet set that I got of the pink with white polka dots also had a fitted sheet. So I went back to the drawing board, converted that fitting sheet into one solid piece of fabric and decided to do all of my skirt panels out of that same fabric that I used for the bodice. To make the skirt fuller, I went ahead and cut as many skirt panels as I could, which I think ended up being about two to four panels more than the original pattern called for. However, I still constructed it the same as the pattern stated, sewing the front to the front side to the back side panels, and then just kind of inserting the extra panels wherever it made sense. Um, because the skirt was ultimately going to be gathered, it wasn't going to change the shape of the waistline. Um, it was just going to make the bottom of the skirt fuller, if that made sense. Here I am on take two of gathering my skirt, running both gathering stitches along the length of the entire skirt, then adjusting those gathers to make sure that it fit the edge of the bodice. Around this time, I got the idea to use the original hot pink skirt almost as a petticoat to make it fuller under the dress. Once I pinned it together, I wanted to get an idea of what it was all going to look like before I committed to sewing the two pieces together. Already, I loved how much more cohesive the dress looked. I loved how twirly and frilly it was going to be. And I knew that having that petticoat layer was going to make all of the difference in the volume of the skirt, which was the original idea that I had with the sheer tool panel. So even though the original, the only original piece of fabric I had for this dress didn't work out, the vision and the dream was still there. I mean, just look at how that twirls. Next was sewing the bodice and the skirt together. Mind you, I still haven't closed the bottom part of the skirt or inserted the zipper. So it did make sewing those two pieces together a little bit easier because it was literally just sewing in one straight line. Next was inserting the zipper. Somehow I didn't catch very much of that on camera, but zippers are a pain and we all know it. So this is still a little too big. I think what I'm gonna do is put darts on the top half to cinch this in. And then I obviously, I need to add the straps, but this is, I love the pink under it. This is Barbie Girl Summer. So I ended up putting the darts in on the side, just basically pinning how tight I needed the dress to be while I had it on. Then I took it off and moved the darts to the inside of the dress basically drawing like little lines um, where the inside folds met and then recreating that with my pins on the inside of the dress. The darts did not look the most pretty on the inside of the bodice, but none of y'all are gonna see that while I'm wearing this dress. So I made my piece with it and I moved on. I definitely could have just, you know, cut it and re-sewn it together, but this gives a little bit more wiggle room. The darts worked. I absolutely crack myself up with how many videos I have solely spinning in place. Then it was time to make the straps. I only had a little bit of scrap material left and for the straps I wanted self-tie straps over the shoulder. 
That means I needed to make four individual strap pieces, which means I needed to have eight pieces of fabric to basically sew together and turn right side out. That meant that these straps need to be very skinny. Here I have sewn the straps together and pinned them on the dress, tied them in place just to make sure I liked where everything was sitting and I loved it. All that was left to do was sew those straps on and we had the Barbie girl dress of our dreams. My machine for some reason was being very stubborn. It was only four layers of fabric and it did not want to sew over them. So I ended up cranking the wheel through most of the straps and then sewing back in place. I wanted to make sure that those straps were going to be super secure, not go anywhere, especially since I don't have any sort of uh, non-slip liner around the top of the bust. These straps were very important. Lastly, I noticed when I was twirling that the hem was not even in all places. Definitely forgot that step of the process. So here I am just evening up those edges. Because I have two layers of the skirt, I don't really feel like using my sewing machine to hem it. So eventually I am going to use the serger I have not yet bought to finish those hems, keep everything in place and make it nice and pretty on the bottom. Once you have your dress made, you get to walk around your house playing Barbie dream house and acting like you're entirely the only main character in this world. If you liked my video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and find me on other socials for other types of content.